Hello friends and not friends alike. We're bringing you another episode, and by I mean we're, I mean me, uh, bringing you another episode of the Quick Start Guide for New Players. This one is going to be concerning uh, weekly things that you should probably be doing. I'm not going to list them in any order of importance or anything. I'm just going to kind of lay them all out uh, and explain what they are for and what they do and why you should do them. So, let's begin with the first one. I touched on this briefly before, but the Una's weekly token meter bar thing. You can see that I have mine filled up for the week. It resets every Wednesday, which is the weekly reset. Why is this important? Una's tokens equal gold. That's as simple as it gets. You turn these tokens into gold. What do you use gold for? Basically everything in the game. Why is that good? I mean, I think you can figure it out, right? Very important would highly recommend if nothing else doing this every week because yeah important gold we love gold next on the agenda uh you have the una task weeklies themselves this is different from the uh meter bar thing whatever you want to call it the weekly tasks are not so much important as they are just helpful for the long-term development of characters. What I usually do on all of my characters is the Guardian Soul one. You harvest six Guardian Souls, you get four Leap Stones and two Ability Stones. You also do the Boss Rush, both of them. You get eight Leap Stones and some Silver and eleven Leap Stones. These are good because Leap Stones are good. You need Leap Stones for things. And by things, I mean honing. That is why leap stones are good. As for other options, you don't really have any other options for weeklies. You can do shards if you want, but realistically, it's either leap stones or silver. Leap stones are generally more valuable than silver. Next on the list for weeklies you should be doing, you have your challenge guardian raids here. What are challenge guardian raids? Well, each one of these lasts for three weeks, they cycle, and it's just on item level Guardian Raids. As you can see, Scale of Harmony, so it item level scales you to what the Guardian should be. It still ends up being way easier than it should be because, like, if I were to go in this, yes, my stats would be scaled, but I'd be 5 by 3 It makes it much easier. Because generally when we were doing these back in the day, we were not 5 by 3 and you were not expected to be 5 by 3 Why are these good? Well, you can take a look over here. You get a bunch of different boxes. Uh, well, you can get a bunch of different boxes. Basically what these mean, these rewards scale to your highest item level on your account. Meaning you will always get materials and stones and equipment on item level that you can always use. These are also tradable, so you can end up selling these if you'd prefer. You also get engravings. You can get books, ability stones, accessories, leap stones, and then both red and blue uh, honing stones. You get them from each of the bosses every week. For the time invested, the rewards are pretty solid, which is why I would highly recommend you do these every week. Next on the list is the Challenge Abyssal Dungeons. Why are Challenge Abyssal Dungeons good? Well, as soon as you can do these, I would highly recommend it. Again, they scale you to item level of the dungeon. They rotate every two weeks. So you will see this Phantom Palace dungeon is going to be rotating out on February 1st. It started on the 18th. And the reason these are good is because at the end of the dungeon, during the loot auction bid, you're able to get two very important things. You can get either one, a legendary card pack, random card pack, drop uh, at the auction. And secondly, you can get a legendary card pack selection chest. Let me take a look here just to show you for visual one of these. 
and these allow you to pick a legendary card specifically that you want. These are really what you're looking for. Random legendary card pack chests are still quite good though, and they can go for a nice amount of gold. And that is mostly why you're going to want to do these. Because as a newer player, legendary card selection packs have less value to you than they do people who have been playing the game for a significant period of time. Because what older players like myself would use these for is to finish our card sets that we've been working on for the last year. You're not going to have that kind of time if you're a newer player and you just hopped into the game. But what you can get from that is if you get two older players, or maybe even three older players that really want these card packs in your dungeon, these things can easily go for over 100,000 gold. That is a nice split for somebody who's pretty fresh to the game. So, these are very important to run. You don't see them too, too often, but you can definitely have a week where you hop in here and you see a legendary pack from both of these, and it's honestly like Christmas, better than Christmas sometimes. Next on the list, we have Legion Raids, Abyss Raids. These you probably already are familiar with if you've been playing the game for a bit, but basically... Your Abyss slash Legion raids, you want to be doing three of these a week because they give you gold. As you can see here, I've exceeded my weekly gold limit because I've already done mine. You do three raids on each of your six characters, you get gold. Why is that important? Well, gold. And then obviously for the Legion raids, you will need the materials to craft relic sets. You can also get good accessory drops and class book drops from some of these at the loot auction. Basically, Legion Raids, important to do. Uh, not only for the rewards, gold-wise, but for the gear rewards. I think that about does it for weekly things that really consistently matter. There are a couple other smaller things, but I don't think they're worth mentioning in this video. I like to try to keep it concise or as concise as I'm able to, because this is supposed to be a quick start guide, right? Anyways, sorry for the lack of these quick start guides. I will get back to hopefully being able to produce maybe one of these every week and a half or so. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you, and I hope this was useful, at least to some of you. I will see you all in the next one. Like, comment, dislike if you dislike, and of course subscribe if you made it this far and you have not already. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Bye-bye.